Hey guys, welcome back to Pajama Crafts where I do crafts in my pajamas and if you are new here, welcome. My name is Sarah um, and I have some awesome DIYs for you guys today. I'm really excited too to say that this video is sponsored by Arteza, Arteza, I don't know how you say it. If you guys know, tell me, was it the first or the second, Arteza or Arteza? Um, anyway. I love all of their stuff. They have some really awesome art supplies that they sent to me and I'm really excited to show you guys what I did with them. There's just so many options um, to do with all of the things on their site. Everything is like super, super good quality. You guys know I'm always talking about my um, paint pens. Where can I get really good quality ones? I've used Posca in the past um, and I was actually just starting to run out of those so I was um, planning to either get some more or look for some other um, good quality paint pens and they actually sent me some to try which I love so make sure you watch and see what I did with those um, and then I'll show you guys here in a minute what all they sent me but um, I just wanted to thank them for sponsoring this video and I will have the links down below um, for everything that I used in the video, the direct link for each item and then also just the link to their channel um, and a 10% off coupon code. Um, I think it's just pajama crafts one. I'll put it here on the screen. Um, but that's for you guys to get 10% off and you can just go through the links down in the description box. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited to show you guys what I used um, the items for in this video. I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of them in this video. Um, either, either way, even if I do use all of them, I'm still going to have a lot left over to use. So I'm sure I will be using these a lot in future videos. Uh, but I'm really excited to show you guys what I made today, so let's get into the video. So the first thing that they sent to me are these paint pens. It comes with 20 in the pack and it says they're oil-based, permanent, quick drying, and non-toxic. So that's all good stuff. I have really high hopes for these because I'm running low on the paint pens that I've been using and I'm looking for some really good quality paint pens. You guys hear me talk about that all the time. Um, so I really hope these turn out to um, be good quality and work well and I'm going to try them out in this video so um, we will see here in just a few minutes I guess. And then the next thing that they sent me are these wood slices. Um, it comes with 45 wood slices. They're natural pine wood with bark. They're pre-sanded, polished. It's a smooth surface, perfect for arts and crafts. This is a really cute box too. Um, I'm just gonna show you here. They actually come so many. I'm really excited for these two. And then um, these, they come with a pre-drilled hole in all of them and they're a little bit different sizes. They're not all exactly the same, but they also come with this twine. So these would be really cute for making ornaments and things like that, but we're gonna um, try to be creative with these and see what all we can make in this video. Well, I might just do one DIY in this video with those and then we'll try, um, you know, some other DIYs in future videos. Next, they sent me these 20 outdoor acrylic colors. There's so many beautiful colors in here, guys. I'm really excited to try these out because obviously um, it says they are water-based, scuff-resistant, self-sealing, indoor and outdoor use, and non-toxic. I'm sure everything they do is non-toxic, um, but I'm really excited about these because I have made some outdoor signs in the past where I had to seal them myself um, with an extra product, so I'm really excited to use some of these paints and see how they wear outside. Um, and then they have so many really pretty colors, and usually, if you can see all of those in there, and I am not usually one for tons of bright colors. I like to have a more neutral palette, you know, farmhouse, country type decor, but I'm really excited to use some of these colors and implement them into my decor. Um, some of them are just really, really pretty, so it's nice to have little pops of color here and there. And I'm excited to try out some fall decor. We have some really pretty yellows and oranges, and then there's just all, all kinds of really pretty colors in here. So we will try some of these out in this video 
as well. Look at this. I don't know what I'm gonna make with this. Maybe something for Bree's room. And then the last thing that they sent me is these 36 metallic acrylic colors. Um, these look so fancy, you guys. I am not, I'm not one, I'm not like a real artist or anything by any means. Um, but I am really excited to try these because these are really, really pretty colors. So we're going to see what I can come up with to make. But as you can see here, they are, they are a ton of colors. And this is just one layer. So there's actually three layers on each side. So there is a ton of beautiful colors in here. So many beautiful colors. Oh, I like these. Yeah, uh, yeah. I also love greens like this. So that's what we have in here. So I'm really excited to try these out. So thank you again to Arteza for sending these to me. I cannot wait to try them. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, you guys, this is my second time editing this entire video and my third time doing the voiceover. So hopefully this time I can get it right. <laughs> um, I've just been having some technical difficulties. But to make this first project, I'm just cutting two squares of fabric. This is fabric from uh, Walmart. It was around a dollar something per yard. So I got quite a bit of it. I really love it. It's kind of like canvas, but a lot thinner and really easy to work with. I just took my wood slices I, um, and set them out like how they would go for tic-tac-toe. And then I just went around that and kind of eyeballed how big I wanted my squares to make my bag. Now this bag is not gonna be super functional. This is just kind of for decor or like a fun game to set out. If you wanted this to be super functional, I would suggest actually sewing it, um, especially cause I put a drawstring on it, but it's not really that functional because you know, when you squish up hot glue, it's not gonna stay very well. I just squished it up one time. Um, to kind of give it those wrinkles so that when I distress the bag, it really highlights all of that. But right now I'm just using my hot glue and going around three edges. I left a little bit of space at the top because I want to make my drawstring. I can't even explain to you how I made the drawstring, just watch. But I just went ahead and am turning my bag right side out now and it has nice little edges. And I'm cutting this off my Dollar Tree scissors were garbage. Not that they're made for fabric, but I switched to my tiny scissors because I couldn't even find my regular craft scissors. Hashtag mom life, but let's not even blame this one on my kids. I lost them myself. I just found them a little bit ago. But anyway, here I'm scrunching up the bag. Um, and then I have one of my paint markers from the Arteza or Arteza, um, I've heard it both ways. Anyway, I love that they come in a little wrapper for each individual marker because that way if something happens in the package on the way here in shipping, it's not gonna leak all over everything. So I really liked that. And then I also had little instructions on the side of the pens, it was super easy to use. All you gotta do is shake it Give it three pumps with your thumb. And then I just used a piece of paper. You can see the tip is yellow when it starts out. And then I just used a piece of paper to press down until the paint came out. I keep checking because if you just leave it going by itself, you can end up with a little pool of paint with most paint markers. So I just kept checking going little by little and you can start to see the paint coming down. Once the paint did come out, these worked beautifully. I absolutely love them, and I am just so excited to have these new ones. So here I'm just taking my box from the wood slices and using that as a, to make a straight line. I did not, um, like I said, I did not measure anything. I'm just eyeballing everything. I want it to look really handmade. Maybe even like a kid just threw it together and drew on 
this little bag so they could have a little tic-tac-toe game. Um, these are not the fabric markers, but they do carry fabric markers, which I am going to be really excited to try. Um, and I'm sure those would work better so there would be no bleeding of paint or anything like that. But these work just fine for what I was using it for. And then I did those X's and O's with my good old stencil from Michaels. And then I'm just filling them in with some black matte apple barrel paint from Walmart. I did five of each one and I just tried to get them um, similar in size. And then here I'm taking some Distress Ink. This is from Hobby Lobby, like from many years ago. Um, I've been using this for a really long time. I absolutely love it to distress fabric and also um, paper. I love it. I think it makes it look really old and cool. If you're not going for this look, then obviously you can just skip this step. But I really like it. And so that's what I did. It Here's Zach and I playing a game when I thought I was finished and of course he beat me with his tricks um, but I felt like the the wood slices were a little bit too clean and nice looking compared to the bag so I just took some more of that apple barrel paint and I am just distressing the front of those just dry brushing those on also you can see my hand is absolutely filthy that is mostly from that distress ink so if you don't want to deal with that it's a little bit greasy almost like a stain if you don't want to deal with that I would suggest wearing some gloves when you use that but I don't mind getting dirty every now and then um, it just adds to the fun, I think, sometimes. <laughs> but I think this turned out absolutely adorable. This was not my idea. All of these DIYs in this video I got inspired from Pinterest. Um, so these were not my own idea, but I think they turned out absolutely adorable. And some of them, of course, I put my own little spin on. So now we are moving on to two Halloween DIYs. I've never really... Uh, decorated for Halloween in the past and never really celebrated it before um, but Zach loves Halloween so I decided to do some decor for around our home especially when I saw these paints with so many bright colors and I just um, that's the first thing I thought of that I could do with these so um, here I am using the outdoor uh, just the outdoor paints this paint is like super thick. I really liked how it went onto the wood. Um, I only needed one coat, which was really nice. Um, I did like that I could see a little bit of the wood grain, like those darker wood grains still showing through. So I just left some like that. And then, um, oh guys, I'm actually wearing real clothes here too, not pajamas. Um, cause I went, <laughs> I had taken Brie to her physical therapy evaluation this morning the morning that i'm actually doing this um and what are my toes doing oh my goodness anyway um brie is gonna be going to physical therapy twice a week to get her walking and crawling she's doing really great she's already started um trying to pull herself up on her you know her toy box and things like that but we are just gonna take her just so she can have a little bit of help and get started with doing that stuff and you know figuring out how her legs work and all of that so I'm excited to hopefully we'll be able to get some pictures to share with you um but yeah so I just covered this entire thing and it really dried nicely it does say that it's scuff resistant so I tried to scratch it with my nail and nothing came off I really was impressed with it so for my other side, I'm just taking the back of a Dollar Tree sign. I just took the sticker off and I like to sand it down a little bit where the sticker was because it does sometimes leave some of that texture and I just don't like it. Um, well, obviously it's going to make like a weird bump or something um, when you're painting. So I just sand that down and then I removed the string that, was, that it was hanging from and I will re-add that back on at the end but here I'm just using some of that black outdoor paint for this one as well it's for indoors too so um, I'm not sure if this sign will be outside or not but I wanted to try out as many of the products as I could um, so I just went ahead and did one coat of the black on this little guy
Moving on, I got this kitchen measurement conversion little mason jar sign from Dollar Tree. It's actually a really good quality. I love it. I wanted one for my kitchen because I think it's super um, easy and convenient to um, just glance over and figure that out without me having to look on Google <laughs> like I usually do. Um, so I just went ahead and pulled the base off of there. It wasn't that, it was like a little bit difficult to remove, but I didn't have to use a tool or anything. I just yanked it off as hard as I could. And then, um, I should have used the back of this because, um, like 59 years and 3,000 coats of paint later, this thing was covered. But I should have just used the back because this is too much, you know, stark black and white. It was hard to cover and like the surface was not, it didn't adhere as well to the surface. I think it would have been much better to go on the back. The only reason that I didn't was because I was being lazy and I did not want to go get something to heat up the back of the sign to get that sticker off and I was having a hard time peeling it off. Now I realize that would have been easier than painting this three million times, but I did not want to move my camera or anything either. That's why I did everything outside because I just started with that big one. But anyway, so I'm taking this silver metallic paint that they sent me and I'm actually putting this onto the bottom of the base of that mason jar that I pulled off and we're going to use this for a mini little sign. Um, this stuff paints on so smooth too. I really like it. Like I said, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with all these bright colors and like the metallics and stuff, but I really love how this Halloween little sign came out. Both of them really. But anyway, yeah, so I painted that whole thing purple. I think I did two coats on there and it was perfect. So back to our bigger outdoor sign. I am using these stencils from Walmart um, and I'm just trying to position them exactly the way that I want them. I, like I said, I got my inspiration from Pinterest for all of this stuff. So for this one, um, I want to make the O's, this is supposed to say spooky, and I want to make the O's in the middle look like little spiders. So I'm just using two stencils as like a placeholder for those. My spider bodies, I did not use like a template or like a round piece or anything to do that. I probably should have because I'm not the best at freehanding things. So my spiders got a little bit off center, but that's okay. I think it still came out really cute in the end. Um, but yeah, so I just went ahead and made like a little round body. I just made a simple spider, but you still see me looking back at my phone here like, how do I make spider legs? This is how bad I am with actual drawing, you guys, but I think they came out cute. And I just filled in all of the letters with that black um, outdoor paint as well. That way I will not have to seal this at all before it goes outside, which I am really excited about. Um, last time I made an outdoor sign was a welcome sign after Christmas and it literally took me like months um, to stop procrastinating and put the sealant on it that I had to do t before I put it outside. So that thing was just sitting in our house looking cute with no sealant and like it said welcome. Just like sitting behind the couch or something because I was procrastinating. So I'm really excited that I did not have to use an extra product to seal this after I was done painting it. So here I am apparently just sitting on top of my sign um, to draw a little spider web in the corner. I did another one down in the other corner. Do you guys sometimes end up in weird positions when you're crafting? I know I'm not a very good artist um, and I don't have a really good steady hand so sometimes I have to get in really weird positions to get the right angle or like so that I can keep my pen steady. But anyway, I just drew what I think turned out to be a cute little spider web. And then you guys, I had to bring this inside because it was getting dark outside and I wanted you guys to be able to see exactly what I was doing. Um, but I actually ended up taking it back outside just to do a little dry brushing. I just dry brushed on some of that black outdoor paint and I think it really made the sign come to life. You know, it really made it look super like Halloween-y, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's what I did here. Like I said, I've never made something like this before and I'm really impressed with how it turned out. I am so impressed with myself. I'm just kidding. I really like how it turned out. I think it was super cute and it was just a really fun project to do 
Something that I've never done before. There it is. Okay, so on to the next one. After all my thousands of coats of orange paint dried, I'm just taking some silver metallic paint that they sent me and I wanted to just cover the lid here and I just did two coats of that for the lid. I forgot to mention that these are, this is an American company which I really like. I love to support um, American made companies. Um, but I brought in this little purple base that is now going to be my sign and I'm just writing boo on here. I didn't use a stencil or anything. I just thought it'd be fun to do a little, um, handwritten one. And then I just used a silver metallic paint marker. I love that there are so many colors to choose from in the pack. So fun. Um, and I think that's all I did. Just super simple. I thought it was cute. And then I wanted to make this lid look galvanized. So I'm using this brush with like the stiffer bristles. And then I have this chalk paint. I think it's the color Maui Sand. And I just kind of dab that on there along with this white Adirondack. And um, I asked Zach if it looked like metal. And he said it looks like a rock. So I don't know what that means. Um, but I th it was good enough for me and then I'm using that black paint marker again to draw my face onto my mason jar and I think it's gonna make a cute little jack-o-lantern mason jar and then I took some more of that black outdoor paint and I'm just dry brushing that onto our little jar here and I think he's turning out super adorable you guys know I had to distress everything to make it look so cute. I don't know what I'm saying. Like, that's just my style. I think he's adorable. Also, guys, wait wait till the end of the video and you'll see Bree singing Sweet Caroline. <laughs> She's adorable. Just taking some raffia that I have left over from Dollar Tree from literally like two years ago. Um, and I'm just hot gluing a few pieces around the top two or three um, and then I also wanted to make a bow so I decided to use some Dollar Tree ribbon I used the one with the black polka dots because I think it is super cute and goes really well with my sign for Halloween now if you guys had never made a bow before I did try to keep this one just in real time um, I just fold it in thirds and then Usually I would tie some twine around the middle to cinch it up, but unfortunately I was already sitting on the floor and there was no way I was getting back up to go get my twine from across the room. So I just used my hot glue gun to scrunch it and a little piece of ribbon to go around the middle and burn my fingers, which I already knew was going to happen. So that's on me, but sometimes you just cannot get up one more time. But I think the bow came out super cute in the end. And then I ended up adding a little bit more raffia just poking out the edges of the bow just to make it look a little extra cute. Also, since I finished these signs in the living room, I pushed the big one to the side and then Brie was like sitting on it later. I put a picture at the end too because she looked super cute and she was being so funny. <laughs> But here I'm just gluing everything down with hot glue. Of course you can add E6000 or super glue or whatever you want to make it a stronger hold. But hot glue worked just fine for what I'm using it for. So I just hot glued everything down and this guy was finished. Please let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite. And all... Uh, obviously like always if you like the video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one and if you think your friends or family would like it too please share bye sweet caroline bum 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 <laughs>